to it. 
the South, such as the ones in, uh, in Colombia, by these drug cartels, because they find ways of corrupting the state, because they corrupt members of that state. And um, because they have an incentive to do that, because you need these geographical controls to create these channels through which you can smuggle drugs. As a consumer of recreational drugs, what you are doing is like being the end point of a chain of events um, um, when you create demand and like um, subsidize these activities. We think that you are directly responsible for the fact that citizens in Guinea-Bissau are living in corrupt societies with unstable governments that are locked in conflicts because there are conflicts between cartels, there are conflicts between the smuggling networks and between the government. We think that in these unstable situations, it's really hard for governments to provide its citizens with essential services. We think that instability generally means that it's harder for people to have job security because you don't know if like the factory that you work for and the like the place that you live in is going to suddenly have a huge geographical power shift because um, because the underlying um, like drug smuggling networks are such an inherent part of how that world functions. Madam uh, Woman, Mr. Speaker, um, when you take drugs recreationally, you do far more than expose yourself to risks. You are responsible for creation of culture, and you'll be responsible for funding activities that we are very proud to um, support the diminishing of. Drugs, 
it, it, it informs people don't succumb to the effects. It informs rational people realize that, okay, I don't want to take drugs because I don't want to take those risks. I am not happy myself making that trade off. They can make that decision and they do not have to succumb to the peer pressure. And secondly, if we accept that it normalizes things and that sort of thing, well, it is much better that it normalizes it in a safe, rational, responsible environment. We'd much rather have a normalized drug culture in which people are doing things in an informed way, in a safe way, in a weekend on an every single, like, not like a crazy, like, kill everyone kind of way. And fourthly, um, like, other harms of, like, the, 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 uh, the, the drug groups in foreign countries and all the other things they do, they do those things because they're profitable, not because they're intricately linked to the drug trade. So those are things that continue whether or not you are buying drugs to have on a Saturday night. Moving on now to my substantive point. So, firstly, like if people have a different idea of what like, a good life is, it's for them to decide what they can a good life is. So first point, I did have a good life and the fact that they vary. I'll take you now. As a first time user of drugs, do you think it's possible to be fully informed about the kind of reaction you're going to have about drugs and about whether you're likely to get it addicted to it? No, when you're the first time, you're 100% sure. That's why, as an informed person, you wouldn't have, like, I don't know the exact jargon, but a hell of a lot of drugs for the first time. <laughs> you would have a little bit and say, okay, that wasn't too bad. How about have a little bit more next time? Well, that wasn't so good, we've got sick next day, I'll have the left next time. You can make those decisions. You can try things out. You can be like Barack Obama and experiment. <laughs> um, okay, so, the fact was, my sister said about the idea that you could like. So, the thing about the idea that you could like, firstly, is that no way is more or less rational than any other way. And no way is more or less valid than anyone else's choice. So look at things like euthanasia, for example. Some people value the idea of dying with dignity, whereas other people want to extend their life as far as possible. <laughs> neither of those things is rational, neither of those things is irrational, and neither yeah. is wrong. People can make those choices and make those decisions for themselves. They're, they alone, those people individually alone, know what is best for them and know what is good for them. And just like other hobbies, there are trade-offs. So like you know that if you are going to engage in like recreational drugs on the weekend, that it's going to have a financial impact. In the same way that if you play golf on the weekend, that's going to have a financial impact. But you make up that trade-off because you know you're going to get some enjoyment out of that. And we think that is a, a very valid choice to make if it's something that gives you happiness and gives you like a choice that you want. Secondly, um, second point I say, drugs help people achieve those like goodness stuff. I that's a poorly written sentence. <laughs> so, but those drugs can help you achieve what you consider to be a good life. That's better. So, if you like to relax and veg out the weekend in front of the sofa and not do anything, and marijuana helps you do that, and that's a very valid choice for you to make. I'm very happy to do that. Same as if you're taking drugs and rip up on the dance floor. Good luck to you. Drug culture is also can be, I'm, I'm going to in the prep room, can be a really, really cool shared experience when you're around with your mates, you're getting high and having a giggle. You find that's really, really fun. And if that's fun with them, let them do it. Also, this is quite a bit more with their substantive, so with their substantive, like how is it compatible with other achievements? So firstly, like we're going to say, it doesn't have to be compatible with every other achievement in your life. If you want to be a cat trader, good luck to you. But secondly, more, more importantly, about harms to other people. Let's talk about the risks of harms to other people like around you. Well, firstly, if you're informed and rational, you can do things in a responsible manner. So like if, you're, if you think this thing's going to be violent, you can do yourself in a safe, secluded area, or you either have supportive friends around you or not, who are going to like, hold me back, bro, if that sort of stuff happens, or do it in a safe area so you can control the damage. Things like alcohol can make me violent, make me damaged. That's why people take the precautions to make sure they're in a safe area, do things in a responsible way. They take those precautions to ensure that the harms that can be associated with alcohol don't actually occur. And furthermore, like things like safe needles. Like when you're making a more choice, you can use like clean needles, not use like dirty needles off the street. And thirdly, you can do other further at this point, you can also do other things like Paramedics on the 7th day of the report the other day, they just got on with their lives by being paramedics and do other things and have other hobbies. <laughs> and fourthly, a rational, like a fourth point to say, a rational person, an informed person, is making plans for the future. So they know that they're going to take drugs and there is, an ex there is a risk that they might need an ambulance cover, they'll do out the ambulance cover when they're in Trinidad. They will make plans for the future. And our preferred world of legalization, we will prepare for this on externalities like cash, that we do other risky things like surfing and like other things like that. And so like, if you're a weekend pot smoker and you want to enjoy that, that's what makes you have the good life. We are very, very happy to stand behind your choices as an informed and rational person, not addicted, to make that choice. We are very proud to oppose.
Um, this is bigger. People aren't perfect rational actors. People make bad choices about all sorts of things all the time. And we're really happy on the affirmative team to say, this is a particular kind of choice that harms all people in similar kinds of ways. Because it's not as though everyone is wildly different from each other. It's not as though every person has a wildly different response to their environment that means they get happiness from wildly different things. People are similar to each other. We as humans have a similar experience of different types of happiness. We experience short-term pleasure in a similar way. We experience the happiness that comes with being a person that, we, that has self-respect and having long-term experiences of building constructive relationships in similar kinds of ways. So really, we're really happy on the affirmative side to say that when those kinds of things that we all know are better for all people are harmed by drugs, that it is a bad thing for all people. And it's not enough just to say, well, some people are slightly different in terms of their preferences. We don't think that that is actually an important consideration in this debate. So I'm also just like Jesse, going to split this into individual communities. Obviously, this debate is covering quite a lot of stuff, so we're also like various different things over the last 30 days. Um, <laughs> before I move on, I was going to respond to something that Harry brought up in a POI, which is like sort of tobacco and alcohol, they're the same, they treat them the same, and the principles are the same. So we just don't think that's true for a whole lot of reasons. So the first reason is that people are more informed about those drugs because we have a better network that allows people to understand these consequences better. And there are reasons why even an informed person still is going to make bad choices about drugs that I'm going to talk about later. The second thing is that we regulate those things more effectively because they're legal. So you know what is in alcohol versus it's like on the label. You don't know what's in an ecstasy tab, even if it's from your like, like, you know, reputable supplier that the kind of wrong <laughs> things exist. Um, <laughs> we don't think that there are broader social harms because those are things that are already normalized in our society. We didn't think you changed that by participating in that. That's something that's very different to drugs. Uh, finally, we think that those drugs are, are less bad for you than most other kinds of drugs. In the sense that they are less addictive and they cause less long-term harm if you use them in moderation. Okay, so I'm going to talk first about the broader social harms that occur to third parties when you choose to consume drugs. So the first one that we brought in was the fact that when you participate in, when you choose to participate and partake uh, in the consumption of drugs, you are part of a culture that means that other people feel that that is something they want to do as well. And we think that that is necessarily true of drugs. Because we think that when you see someone else behaving in a particular way, that makes you more likely to adopt that behavior as well. Because humans are social creatures. We want to experience the same kinds of things as other humans. We want to have shared experiences with those other people. We also think that, for example, like all the people tend to set norms really effectively for young people. Because like all the people look really cool. Because they're often people you want to emulate. So in that sense, uh, when older users choose to consume drugs, that's probably going to have an influence on younger users. So we think that anyone's choice to make drugs, given that everyone consumes drugs in the context of like, their social environments, their social networks, and often usually on, uh, in social settings, means that they have an influence that encourages other people to consume drugs as well. That 